Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of the Blue Oval Podcast. I am Ben Weissel, and joining me, as always, Garrett Satlin. How's it going, man? Ben, it's uh, Super Bowl weekend. The birds play today. I think this is the earliest podcast that we have ever done. Uh, it's 11.48 here on February 12th, which uh, is like, it's it's super early for me, right? I'm just waking up at this time nowadays. So, but, uh, but no, um, dude, hope you had a good weekend. I know it was a wild weekend on our side. My mom decided to come into town this weekend and I was super excited to hang out with her and we did hang out. We went to dinner and everything. And at the same time, I'm texting our editor, John. I was like, where are the graphics, John? Like we need all these NCAA record graphics. <laughs> Um, but it was a wild weekend, very entertaining weekend, and uh, I hope yours was just as entertaining, but slightly calmer. Yes, it, it, was. it was. It's been a good weekend. I am gearing up for a big day today with the Super Bowl, um, so it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, so yeah, we, we're trying to knock this one out early. Like Garrett said, we had a lot of action go down. There were a lot of NCAA records broken across all divisions, um, and we saw... a a, a ton of outstanding performances and our lines from last week are looking pretty darn good that pretty we good. said because they have that that 16th qualifying time is dropping in almost every event quite significantly so uh lots to get into but before that i don't think we got any ratings or reviews this week so make sure you are checking us out on spotify leaving us a rating and review and on apple podcasts as well we really appreciate that Anything else before we get going? I'm just double checking to ensure that we do invite. Yeah, no, new, no, no, nothing new there. So, hey, try to help us out here. YouTube, go subscribe, all that jazz. We'd appreciate it. So, um, and yeah, five star ratings and reviews on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. There's no time to waste. Ben, take the lead. Let's jump into it. All right. So, we're going to start at the top with the 800. And boy, just. A huge weekend in this event, like a lot of other events, but this one in particular started out with a bang with the Sanford freshman duo of Willis and Whitaker running 159 two flat in my stomp around my stomping grounds at the Windy City Invite. Just an incredible performance from both of them. Um, it, it, I, on one hand, it's an incredible performance, but on the other hand, in a race that was basically set up to be between just the two of them i don't know how much we learned other than they are talented like we thought they were and they are in shape like we thought they were this doesn't really tell us how they stack up against running against elite college competition necessarily but it shows that they're ready to go at least in terms of fitness well what i kind of said about this in our first thoughts article is that it's I kind of like you said, we still have a lot of questions like how they run tactically is still in question. Whitaker's first race of the season, with which was a 202, didn't you know, she dominated so easily that it was hard to analyze it. Mm-hmm. While Willis's uh, earlier 203 heat win, I think at the Razorback invite or Arkansas invite, one or the other. And um, like sh- she ran it. It was a weird, weirdly paced race. And so it was hard to be like, OK, how are you going to actually gauge tactics against higher level competition in a race that's a little bit faster the end of the day though i'm looking at this and wondering are are they can they just be fast enough to outrun the competition are they just that good and i i think that's a pretty bold like suggestion to make because of how well rose is running because of how well butler's running or even if butler will run the 800 we'll talk about that in a moment but it's it's I, i agree with you don't know if we really have learned much but I also at the same time think one of them could win the national title. Oh yeah, absolutely. That's definitely in the cards. And I think in almost any year when you're running 159 and two flat, you you probably could say, hey, maybe they're just good enough to run away from the field. But when mm-hmm. you have Michaela Rose running two flat and a host of other women running around 201, it, it isn't quite the same to say I've run 159. I'm just that much better than everybody else in, in this type of year. So I, I would say if they run 150, if someone runs 158, I think I'll be ready to say that where it's just like, all right, yeah, you're, you're better. But at, at this point, there's just too many women right around that two flat mark that I, I just don't think we're going to know until they run 
um, uh, against some elite competition. And that might not happen at this point until NCAA is they don't really have a whole lot of incentive to race a whole lot more other than just train and just train and get ready for nationals. They've, they've hit their marks. They've helped out their DMR. Like there, there isn't a whole lot left for them to do until nationals. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Um, like you said, don't really know if we learned anything in particular about these women, but uh, except that, like, I think they now have proven this winter that they have the fitness to, to potentially win it all. And I think that's at the very least the bar. There has been no learning curve for them as they've transitioned no. to Palo Alto. So that, that, I think that's the biggest sign of, of all Agreed. of this. Um, but like we mentioned, there was a lot of other good 800s. Michaela Rose just looked dominant in her win so at Boston. I mean, we watched this right before we jumped on and my goodness, she just looks so powerful. Just like she was just, it was like she was driving a car, just like accelerating at will almost. It was yep. amazing. Um, and Emma Jean Barrett ran 201 and ran a really smart race. Didn't kind of get, didn't let her get, get, let herself get sucked in early to the fast pace, but moved up really well. Um, but Rose was just the star of this race. And then um, Will and Neeson, I think in a separate heat, am I correct? Or was she in the same heat? Um, uh, I believe separate set, heat. I have to go back and look at that. She runs 202, um, kind of, uh, validating, I think, a little bit of, of what she ran um, in the 1,000. I, I maybe expected her to maybe run a second faster this weekend, but still a very good run from her. Um, but I, I think like we were talking about with Willis and Whitaker, it, it's hard to say – that Rose has maybe improved her p- position in the in terms of contender status. I, I think the way how easily it looked for her maybe does, but she still's got to prove that she can do this against a Whitaker or a Will as someone who can run that pace from the get go and stick with them. But at, at, at this point, I mean, she there's nothing that she's done that doesn't scream national favorite. Like she just looks so good. I don't think there's anything more she could be doing right now to change her mind. Who are you choosing right now? If I said, Ben, 800 meter national title favorite, who are you choosing right now? Uh, Rose hasn't run like any over distance races. Has she? I don't believe so. She's run a mile in 452, which is a PR collegiately. Uh, I might go Willis actually, just because getting through two rounds, really? I I wonder. I I just wonder if this. Well, yeah. Well, maybe maybe even Whitaker because Whitaker's mile 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 prowess. Like like I I don't know. I I'm really struggling. Could you here. say the same thing about Lindsey Butler? Yeah, just ran yeah that's one. fair. Yeah, it might. Uh, yeah, I think Butler's probably the safest answer. I think I think she's the safest answer, but like I you know. As a Virginia Tech alum, <sighs> everyone on YouTube can see what I'm wearing. Um, it's, I mean, Rose has looked not just dominant, yeah. she's looked comfortably dominant. Like, she destroyed that Boston U field. It wasn't close. And it was a good field. At all. It was a really good field. Like, I, I don't know. Like, she just gets better. She has no problem running fast. I think someone on the national stage is going to make that a fast race. Mm-hmm. I don't know, man. Like, Ro- like, she has speed if she wants to utilize it. I think I like she's more experienced. She's only a sophomore, but she's more experienced yeah. than, than Willis and, and Whitaker. I think Butler's a very safe pick. I would have no problem with anyone saying she is the national title favorite. I really want to choose her. In fact, I might even still choose her when it's all come said in time. Uh, I don't even know what the phrase <laughs> said is. Said and done. But here we go. Said and done. Yeah. When it comes time and it's all said and done. Um, I think I'm going to take Rose right now, though. Are these the four women, though, that we think can win the title? Willis, Whitaker, Rose, Butler. Yes, yes. I th- I think I'm trying to figure out who else it would be. Maybe, maybe. Like, yeah, I would probably put like Barrett, Hendrick, Thomas, and another another yeah. tier of like they could if everything aligns perfectly. Don't know if I'd choose them, but yeah, I think I think it's these four. I agree. I, I think they've kind of out of a loaded field, they have separated themselves a little bit. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, I would, I would not want to bet on Rose uh, against Rose after seeing that, like what she's done is super impressive. And, and 
if she can make it through the rounds and just front run like she has, it's hard to see her getting beat, quite frankly. Um, I mean, yeah. I, she looked like she would have had another uh, gear to go if she was pushed. So I, I, I incredible performance for her and, and certainly has vaulted herself into a completely different tier than we expected her to be this season. Um, but on the men's side, we also saw a ton of 146s. It's crazy the, the regularity that we're seeing 146s on the indoor stage. I mean, we are up to 11, 11 men who have run under 147, which is just crazy. And our line of one, what was it, 147.2 is looking quite no it's slower it was one i'm looking at 147 three four oh that's yeah that's going under um we already have 17 men there into that um yeah it, it's just amazing how quick this weekend was we saw um sam austin run 146.0 um Navoski anderson 146.5 jason gomez 146.5 I, I mean samuel rodman 146.9 the eighth green 146.9 Sebastian Gensel, Gensel. one forty six seven. Yeah, I mean, just a loaded, loaded uh, weekend. Rodman looked really good at BU, just hung behind his uh, pacer teammate, and then just cruised to victory from there. Austin beating a very good field of Gomez and get and Gensel, um, and then Navoski Anderson uh, winning at I think it was Vandy. Just a, a complete weekend here. Who in your mind kind of pushed themselves into that like busy mana Carosa group that we kind of had mm. coming into this weekend? Uh, I mean, I think you're suggesting title contenders um, in that instance. Yes. I mean, Navaski Anderson was already a title yeah. contender, and obviously in my mind, so I'm not going to put him there just because he just now decided to run a fast time. Yeah. Um, so I don't. I don't think that's necessarily it. I like Sam Austin a lot. I think he's a year away from contending for a national title. Um, this was a big marquee win, mm-hmm. though. This was like a big, like potentially career, collegiately career defining win. One forty six oh six is like not playing around. For me, though, I think it's Rodman. I think it's Rodman with the way that he ran that race. One forty six nine six continues to get a little bit better, a little bit better, a little bit better. Great as a freshman, clearly a step up now as a sophomore commanded control of that heat and his overall win, even if he just followed the pacer, but he never really uh, faltered from the pace. He was just consistent, steady, strong. I don't really think we've really seen what he can do at his absolute ceiling this season. I, for me, I, I think if you told me that Robin's going to be a top five guy at the national meet, I'd have no problem with that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think top five is certainly in the, in the cards for him. I'm going to go, I'm going to go with Austin just beating, the veterans that he beat this weekend, like Jason yeah. Gomez. Yeah. And when Jason Gomez is in shape, he is one of the hardest guys in the country to beat. And mm-hmm. he, and he beat, yep. the, beat him. Um, and then beating uh, another Iowa state guy, gentle, who's had a good, a good season, but this was a, his best performance of, of the year. Um, I mean, he's just, Austin's look great. He he's beaten. He's, he's won his, uh, both of his eight hundreds this year. Um, and, and has just looked really, really good. I mean, this is a guy who has run 147 um, outdoors, but has just clearly taken a big step up. And he just keeps, I mean, not only is he running these fast times, he's also winning. And I, I think that's what makes me feel a lot better about him. I should note that, yes, he did win the 800 of the Razorback invite, but that was the non-invite right. section. Yeah. So, he would have really only placed what I mean, I, I, third overall, I think in that uh, maybe even fourth. So for perspective, but yes, I mean, he, he did win. He is, he's at another level. He's making the jump. Awesome. We like him a lot. I just think, you know, he just might be a year away. I, and I guess that's unfair to say when Sam Rodman's just as yeah. old, you know? So I, I don't know. Maybe I'm just being irrationally, not lo- I'm just maybe it's not being logical. Yeah, um, and, and I think for Austin, he'll he'll get a good chance to show where he's at at SECs, going through the rounds, yeah. and then going up against mm-hmm. guys like Navoski Anderson, Baylor Franklin. Like I, I think we're gonna learn a lot at SECs in terms of who is a mm-hmm. true true contender in the 800 because there's a lot of good guys there, I um, and, and I think we're gonna that that'll be uh, almost like a nice little pre nationals for a lot of those guys. 
Yeah, and I, I agree. I mean, I could see the title contender, title winner yeah. coming out of, I could see two of the top three guys coming out of the SEC. Um, Absolutely. So, yeah. Anything else before we move to the mile? Um, let me quickly take a look at our notes. No, I mean, incredible stuff all around. We, again, Nathan Green's a couple of guys, like it's crazy that someone can run like one forty seven five, finish seventh in their race, six or seventh. And we don't talk yeah. about them. So, you know, the bar is high again this weekend, like two weekends ago, it is, you have to be like top 10 in your event to get mentioned this weekend, because there is just so many good performances. Speaking of just, Unbelievable, almost record-setting performances in the mile. Anas SIE running 350 at Boston, nearly winning the race between behind uh, Amos Bartlesmeyer, Bartlesmeyer um, and nearly taking down the collegiate record held by Cooper Tier. This was just a stunning display. We've obviously seen SIE run really fast and look really in control in, a, in almost all of his races. But he looks so smooth moving up the field. He wasn't really in like the top three, top four as this race began and just slowly and methodically and decisively made his way up. And I, I think he kind of skirts into lane three for some reason, like at the end, if he loses to Bartlesmeyer by like a hundredth of a second, if he just stays in lane two, runs the shortest distance, I, I think he might win. But that's like the only nit you could pick in his entire race. I mean, at this point, like who, I mean, I mean, it doesn't really matter. He's, he, it doesn't matter. I mean, he's the, is, who, Wascom or SAE? I'm still going Wascom. I think I'm going Wascom just because of the tactics, but man, SAE is making that hard, man. Like, that that is a heck of a when my 352 prediction is a severe <laughs> underestimation that's when you know there's a problem like I, I i just i mean i can't win right like it's ridiculous when i was like well 352 seems about like a, a pretty yeah. generous prediction and it's still not close um it's just pretty ridiculous but dude he, he's at another level like he's really at another level and i just i don't know like where we're gonna rank him I really don't like. I'm like, is he better than Bosley? Like, like, where does that value come in? Yeah. I don't, and I don't know. I just, I don't have a good answer to that. Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, he's got to be like top six, top seven at this point, right? Oh, he's he's top five, top five, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, like, here's the thing: like, he could be ranked ahead of Wascom, and we haven't really decided this yet. He could be ranked ahead of Wascom, but I'd still choose Wascom. Yeah. Well, I mean, SIE's 3K that he's run also. So I mean, good. yeah, he's he's had an outstanding season. I, I just can't wait to see what he does at Nationals. If he can if he can put it together at Nationals and and win, then I we're going to have we have the next budding NCAA superstar, um which, which is really exciting to think about. It's so crazy that like we're like he's running 350 and 741. We're like he might be the next NCAA superstar. We're like what do you mean he might be? Yeah. Like the the bar for what is a superstar now is so unbelievable to the point where we're like, well, NCAA number two all time, top five all time, 3K or top six all time. We're like he might be an NCAA superstar. It's like what are we doing? <laughs> what are we doing it's just Anyways. a different world we live in now and the last two or three years has just completely changed how we think about times in the ncaa um speaking of that thomas van open and isaac baston both running 354 um Clutch. at bu as well in that same race baston just running in dead last for a lot of this race and then working his way up running a, a great time i think puts him right back into that kind of area that we thought he was going to be in at the beginning of the season where he's a great finisher. We just needed to see him run a quick enough time to one qualify, but also show that he can kind of hang on to a quick pace at nationals. So I, and Van Open, I mean, continues what he's done over the last 12 months of just looking extremely strong, extremely composed in mile races particular. And I don't know if we learn a whole lot about either of these two guys, but they definitely show that they're ready to go by March. Uh, Van Oppen and Bastin, who, if you had to put all of your life savings, you said that this, it, you can only pick one of them to be an All-American. Oh, man. Who are you choosing? 
I think probably Baston yeah, because so I I think there's a he's not going to run a race where he blows up. If I I, I feel and Van Open I think is a little less afraid to stick his nose in it, and I think that's an admirable trait, but it also leads to a higher potential of blowing up and not being an All American. I think Baston is smart and is is knows that maybe he won't win, but he's going to uh, he's going to like give himself a chance at finishing pretty high in almost every race. He's at. Here's the thing. I think he thinks he can win. I Maybe. He, I, I feel like he does. Um, like I, I kind of like some of the confidence that he has, even if he's clearly not the most talented guy in the field, if he's there with 300 to go, I don't know. Crazy things have happened. And, but I, I think, I mean, the, the thing is like, they're both tactically some of the best milers mm-hmm. in the country. And that's why this is such a ridiculous exercise and question to even ask and suggest. Um, but yeah, I, I like them both, man. I think it's just because Baston has accomplished it at the collegiate indoor mile before, whereas yep. Van Hoppen's really only accomplished it at the 1500 meters. But they're, they're talented. I just didn't all, my only thing for, for Baston, even Van Hoppen was, or, are you just going to be able to run a fast enough time? Like you could run yeah. 355, 356 low and not get in, which is crazy. Um, yeah. But they did it. Yeah. And I like Van Oppen's strength um, to get through the rounds probably more. And that's, that's something we should probably mention what he did in cross country. I think it shows that he's going to be able to get through the rounds probably very comfortably and be able to um, recover and get going for the na- for the finals pretty well. Bastion, I would imagine he obviously he's done that before, uh, but I think Van Open's cross country strength it, it will be helpful there. Do you want to touch on all these three fifty fives, or do you want to head to the to the women's? Well, let's just briefly touch on them. Uh, Ethan Strand three fifty five oh eight Music City Challenge. I was right. Uh, Connor Murphy three fifty five two four. Uh, Elliot Cook three fifty five three four. We already talked about that. Adam Spencer three fifty five six one. Or else did we miss anything else? And then Nick Foster will throw him a uh, Nick Foster. Yeah, three fifty six oh eight. Um, Elliot Cook. Oh well. Yeah, uh, we'll, we'll get to 3K later. Elliot Cook, 355-34. He's also run 146-93. He's ranked mm-hmm. 9 in the 800 right now. He's ranked 10 in the mile. What does he do? Uh, I think he should still stick in the 800. Uh, maybe. I, I don't think. I think I think he has more of a ceiling in the mile, but I think he it's a little more predictable about what he could or could not do in the 800. Yeah. I, I worry a little bit about him getting through the rounds, um, inexperience, uh, in the mile and just the, the unpredictability of, of how that mile prelims could be run. I, I feel a little bit more comfortable in him cruising through in the 800. I don't, I don't think there's a right answer. I don't think, I don't think there's a right answer. I just don't know. No, I, I mean, a lot of these guys who have run good 800s and miles are going to be facing a hard decision because I, I don't know if there's anyone in the 800 that strikes as much fear in everybody as Wascom and SIE are. That's that's a very, very fair point. Agreed. And I'll complain. There's a lot of really good guys. Uh, we just went through it. There's a lot of really good 146 guys. But I there there isn't someone running three fifty or the reigning at fifteen hundred meter champ in, in the field in the mile. Yeah, I would I, I would agree with that. So on the women's side, Lindsay Butler ran four thirty one. We saw uh, Salon Ayildas. Uh, I think we're going with that four thirty two wow. from South Carolina. Uh, we saw Thornton Bot four thirty three. Uh, Kazimierska 433, Rowan Tiski 433, and Appleton 433. Just a another host of crazy quick performances for the women in the mile. Like, what we've seen in the women's mile over the last few weeks is just nothing short of stunning. Like, we, if you've run 433, if you've dipped just under 434, you are 21st right now. <laughs> that is stupid. <laughs> That is ridiculous. Like, it's just wild. Like, all these women ran really well. I don't think... What Do you think Butler's going to run the the mile now that she's done this? Or do you think she's still going to stick with the eight? I I don't know. I 
think she runs the eight. Because here's what's going to happen. She's going to go to ACCs. She's going to solo a two flat or 201. Yeah. And it's going to enchant her. Like, all right, well, she's going to run the 800 just like she did last year. Like, it's it's going to be very clear that's what's going to happen. But it depends. Like, if you look at the title contenders in the 800 meters, there's probably more of those than what you see in the mile. Like, Tui will probably scratch. Yeah. Um, McCabe will probably scratch. Gregory, I don't know if Gregory will. I, I'm not convinced that she will. Um, but like you kind of look, you kind of look at a few of these. And I'm like, there might be a greater chance for mild success for a title for Butler right now. Um, yeah, I, I I think she still goes 800 because that's her comfort zone. But she she could do it. I, I think her being put in the second heat at Boston kind of tells you where her comfort level is. Like I, 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 I think if she felt, well, I don't confident. know if she had that choice. Well, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Or, or maybe that's where her coach's comfort level is with like, I, I feel like if they wanted you, you put the, an, a NCAA champ in the first heat, if they want to be right. Um, I, I may, maybe, I don't know. I don't have a good answer to that. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've I, never, I've never coached an NCAA champion. Um, so I've just, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, no, and I, so I, I agree. I think it would probably be 800 for her. The only women that I think really maybe changed uh, my opinion on and, and really vaulted them into a, a new class was Aildas. Um, mm-hmm. That 432 finishing second in the top heat at Boston uh, behind Susan Ajore. Um, She just looked really good, beat the Oregon women, beat Mia Barnett, beat a lot of really, really top names and looked pretty good doing it. And I, I think in a year when you kind of have to run at least 432 or faster to be really feel like you're in dis- the discussion of being an All-American, I think she kind of put herself in that group. Uh, and I don't know how high her ceiling is. Maybe she ends up running something a little faster. Um, but at SECs, we're going to see her go up against some top Arkansas women, some top Alabama women, and I think we're going to really get a better idea. But I think she's at least put herself in that discussion now. I really like her. She's really good. I mean, she has like a really good history of um, like middle distance performances mm-hmm. before she even came to South Carolina. Yeah, um, she ran like two hundred three and four ten. She did a two hundred six four thirty six double earlier in the season. I predict her to run like four thirty or four thirty one. I think um, so. Like I, it was. And I think she like, might have if, if it was a little bit she of a faster have. race. Like they just the the way it was paced wasn't super fast. They, I mean, I think they came through what was it sixty eight for the first four hundred or something like that. Um, so it wasn't like it was a a screaming hot pace. And I mean, the winner only ran four thirty one point eight. Um, so maybe in a, in a, another situation, she does run that four thirty one or four thirty. Which tier is she closer to? Title favorites or title contenders? uh contenders i think so too yeah no but it's, not... it's not but it's it's not by a big margin like i if someone wanted to say i think she's a title favorite i don't know if i totally would argue if she wins sec she's the title fa- she's a ta- she's a title favorite if she wins sec she's more of the title favorite matug ramsden gibson uh let's assume butler scratches or i held this i think if matug wins the accs that she's the title favorite in my mind Okay, I'm, and I wouldn't argue that. Yeah, I'm just I'd be interested to see how that goes. Yeah, because the ACCs is going to be fast. Exactly, and it's, gonna be, it's just it's going to be competitive. I should say. Yeah, and it'll be interesting to see if Tui runs it. Uh, I think she's. I think she'll probably end up doing a DMR. I yeah. have a feeling that's that's probably just fair. Get NC State in. So yeah, it'll be interesting. Uh, anything else on any of these other women who ran really fast this weekend in the mile? Be- so impressive they shouldn't be this good they're all so young and yeah. they have just an incredible like i real quick i, I know we're, we're going to try to wrap things up pretty quickly today because of how long a lot of these you know pieces are but uh riley chamberlain true freshman taylor rohinsky true freshman they've each run 433 this season cd sergeant's run 435 lexi holiday's run 4037 uh heather hansen's run 439 carmen alder has run 436 but she's only run 4 uh, 42 this season BYU shouldn't be this good. <laughs> they just shouldn't. In another two or three years, what's going to happen is they're going to have the same kind of season as when they had in the winter of 2021. Yeah. 
They had Whitney Oregon and they had uh, Courtney Wayman and everyone was amazing. Anna, Anna Camp Bennett. Bennett. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's what's going to happen. Shout out BYU. I don't know how they do it. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. There, you could see them building the next great yeah. BYU team and like the next stars uh, of the NCAA, which is crazy how quickly like they've been able to refresh and like you can already see that on the horizon in a year or two despite those stars leaving just a year or two ago. Look, we haven't even mentioned Aubrey Frenthway winning 1532 this weekend. John Hutchins is running in 905 at the, for 3K. Yeah. Like, what are we doing? <laughs> it's just insane. Hey, we'll, we'll get to the 5Ks. Don't worry. Yeah. Um, but yeah, let's go to the 3K, and we got to start Caitlin Tui. Not only did she go under 840, which we both said, probably is going to happen i think we we talked about that last week she ran 835 and like was looking very very good in it she ran a really smart race running behind whitney morgan kind of a little bit off of alicia monson in that front pack early on worked her way up with whitney morgan and then just battled and hung tough despite running a 71 uh, second to last 400, she came back with a great last lap and ran a huge NCAA record. Like, not even close, beating it by six seconds and not looking that out of place with someone like Monson, who is, we were talking about this, might be one of the best, like, pros in the world right now. It is just incredible from from a, really, she's a, technically a, a sophomore in college it, it's just, uh, by eligibility. is just crazy. If Caitlin Tui wins the 5K, 3K indoor title, even if she doesn't break any records this spring and she go, go wins a 5K title on the outdoor track, there is zero reason for her not to win the Bowerman. Yeah. Unless someone else like just breaks every jump sprints record, unless they're like, you know, world record caliber I don't know a scenario where Caitlin Tui doesn't win the boat or should, you know, shouldn't win the boat. Yeah. Right. I, I don't know a scenario like that. I, th- this is the bar. She's incredible. I, I, I just don't know how else to, to put it that way. It, she should be winning the boat. Yeah, I mean, a 35 is just a stupid, stupid time. Like it, it, it's, it's not even, I don't think that even crossed our mind that she would run that fast. Like we thought 838, 839 would be an excellent day. And for her to do that, uh, to, to run that time is just yeah, shattering a record from Carissa Schweitzer, who was one of the best NCAA runners we've ever seen. It, and beating it like that is just stunning. I, I have run out of superlatives to, when I'm talking about Tui at this point. I, I posed the question on our social media is maybe just kind of like saying like, oh, let's just see what people's reactions are. Um, is Caitlin Tui the, the goat of NCAA distance running? Do I think she's there yet? No, I don't. Just because I think she needs some longevity. Some more titles. She, she just has, she just needs a few more titles. And I think that's going to be generally the argument against her. But I'll tell you what, man, you want to take a look at the past 365. Let's assume she goes wins the 5K, 3K title this year. Like, has anyone had a better year of performances than Caitlin Tui? I, I don't think they have. That cross country national title was in the it was the fastest, one of the most impressive national title victories we have ever seen against a true superstar who five years ago would be viewed as a god, yeah. right? Of just like of how amazing Parker Volby is. She's not just breaking these records she is shattering these records like it's not even close by a lot and as she's got a 5k title she's got a cross-country title the impact she's had on her team as a dynasty the argument i think is there i know it's it's a very kind of like a short-term base it's like well you got to give consideration to others and that's why i don't think she's there yet but i think she's only not in the goat she's not the goat yet just because of long, she just hasn't been there long enough. And I think that's literally the only argument you can make against If she stays in the NCAA for one more year after this, it's hard to see her not being the best ever. I, it's, it's just insane. Yeah. Just insane. Mercy Chilean God also ran a 54 in this race, which on, <laughs> is not a, a bad run. But when you see the distance between her and Tui, it is just 
like mind boggling. And, and I mean, elsewhere in the women on the women's side, you saw another Alabama runner, uh, Hilda Olamome, run eight forty five. Parker Volby ran eight forty nine. Saw Taylor Rowe run eight fifty six. Like you saw all the best women in the country run fairly well. But there's still, even if you're looking at all of Mama, a 10-second gap from them to Tui. Like, all of Mama's performance on any other weekend in any other year would be like, all right, well, she's the title favorite. And, yep. and like, there's not really any debate on that. But Tui is just in a world of her own. And you can't say that all these other women didn't run well. I think Roe winning against Plourd, Baran, Gregory, Really good performance from her. Volby pushing the pace, trying to to run that low 840s before falling apart a little bit at the end. A, a good performance to still break 850. Chilean got a, in a really fast, in a really like tough race to kind of run in at Milrose. Still puts together a sub nine. Like all these performances aren't bad, but they're all going to be chasing second at this point. So who? I guess who at this point? is that clear second best runner in the 3K at this point? I, I don't know if there's a clear second best. Um, I'd still probably go Volby. I think like you can't compare yesterday's effort to her. Yeah. Just She's clearly chasing some kind of like ridiculous time. Yeah. She didn't get it. But like it just the, the tactics and her assertiveness is going to be, I imagine, slightly different on the national stage than what it was this past weekend. She was the one in a field full of pros – that was pushing the pace. I still think she's probably the second best option, but you could you could argue McCabe and Markovic. I think I want to know more about Hilda Olamamwe. I yeah. I want to know how she does in tactical races when it's more speed and nuance and things of that nature. Um, you could throw Ramsden in there, but like I, I don't, you know. I still I, love I, Taylor no. Rowe. I I think I yeah, think Taylor yeah. Rowe has a very good shot at. And ending up being second at nationals. Like I think Volby. If it's slower than eight fifty five, yes. Yeah. Well, and, and I just I I wonder. Yeah, you wonder how the race is going to be run, and you wonder if Volby will almost like push her like like by trying to run with Tui, almost push herself back a few spots if she ran a little bit more Possible. conservatively. And I think Roe isn't going to do that. She's she's going to be there, like be a little conservative, and then push at the end. And I mean, she's won an NCAA title before. And, and and like I think in a world with two in Volby, you forget about how good a row can be. Um she just needs to run a little faster. Like I, I would like to like to see her run like eight fifty. Uh and then I think you would feel you a lot want better to see her about run that. 850? I would. I mean I would like to see everyone run eight fifty. Yeah, I, I mean I, I mean like be a little bit closer, like within <laughs> within like six or seven seconds of what all of Mama ran would be nice. Um, fair enough. All I'm saying is like, I, yeah, I mean, like, I would like to see her run a little bit faster. Sure. I just don't know if it's necessary. Yeah. Um, also really quick, our NCAA lines here. Um, if you take out Tanisima, but then you add in Chalanga, who's not added into Tifer's leaderboard for whatever reason, I think it's just a clerical error. Um, the 16th fastest time is 858.51. And then Simone Plort at 15 is 857.12. So we need one more woman to run under our line of 857.1. Oh, wait. I take that back. We need two. Two. Two more to run under the line of 857.1 for our line to be correct. I think we both chose under is the craziest part. That's going to happen. We, and I think we'll get it. I think we'll get it. Yeah. Crap. Rose right on the edge. That's wild. <laughs> she She's right on the edge. Oh, wow. Yeah. The, the that... good thing is that even if two more women run faster than her, um, she'll still get it. Yeah. Yeah. Which I, I think she'll make it, but that, that is crazy. To think Here's about. another question outside of obviously Tanisima, cause she, she's not competing this winter officially. Do you see anyone scratching? Mm, me? Well, no, no. no I mean, the three K you don't, you don't scratch. No, I agree. There's no reason for some of these women to for any of these women to scratch. Yeah, I was like, I was thinking maybe Ramson because she'll probably run the mile or Motug, but they'll just come back after the mile. So, yeah, I, I don't see it. Um, but let's go to the men's side where we nearly saw another NCAA record in the 3K. Dylan Jacobs running 736, nearly breaking Drew Bosley's record that he just set. 
um, at Melrose. And I mean, he looked so good in a race that had just so much fireworks up front. It was an incredible, perform- uh, incredible race to watch in general. And, and for Jacobs to just hang tough and run that 736 when you had guys like Josh Kerr running 732, it was just an inc- a incredibly impressive performance for Jacobs. And I mean, he, you got to put him up there, especially with Nico Young ending up running 751 in that race. Jacobs has to be a, a one of the title favorites right now because I mean we haven't seen Kai Robinson look great. He's he might we talked about this last week. He might not actually end up running the three k um, because he's going to World Cross Country Championships. It, it might be Jacobs and Bosley at this point. This is so crazy, insane. I just. I mean, I, here's the thing. It's like I, I even like in our preview, I was like, "Hey, Abbasi's record might be under, it might be in jeopardy." And the whole thing though behind that is, I thought it would be Nico Young breaking the record, who obviously just not did not run well. Jacobs is at another level. Like Jacobs is now to the point where I was like, "Oh, he's fit last year." No, no, no. Now he's fit into the point where like I feel comfortable about him like potentially actually contending for the national title. Yeah. And it's it's just enough where now I'm like. Man, 736 is something different. Now, granted, Bosley and Jacobs were both in fields where it's not like it's it's not going to be that way on the national stage. No. Like, do they have enough turnover? And they might. I, I don't know, but do they have enough turnover for them to win a title if it's tactical? Honestly, I don't know. Like, if if you told me, all right, well, who are you picking? Those two guys are Fawad and SIE. I don't know if I'd immediately jump to pick those two guys over Fawad or SAE. Yeah. Um, but still, I mean, Jacobs is now – like I think we're, when, when we look back at this era 5, 10, 15, 20 years from now, we're going to be like, who were the guys that created this these floodgates of times that established this new era of excellence? You're going to have to put Bob, mm-hmm. uh, Jacobs in that conversation because I think it was previously – it was like, Nur – Kip to Bosley, you know, obviously this season, I think there's a handful of guys that maybe you start, you would argue in favor for. And now I think with this kind of time, Jacobs has to be in there. Yeah. 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 I, I mean, it really, he, he just gone up another level, like you mentioned. And then the Oklahoma state guys, Alex Meyer was in that same race at Mill Rose ran 743. I think he just, I, I think in, if he ran with his teammates, Masaudi and, and Shopee, I, I think he runs 741 with them probably. Mm-hmm. But in that kind of race, I think it was just a little too much for him. And he still ran 743, which is a, a good performance. But you mentioned Fouad Masaudi. I mean, does he does he just scratch the mile and, and try to win the 3K? I, because I, I, mean, I watched a... I watched an interview. I think the idea is that he wants to do DMR yeah, 3K. Then that makes a lot of sense to me. And I think yeah. that's what he should do. SIE is going to run the mile and then he might double back for the 3K, but I don't I don't think he's going to be a factor if he runs the the mile before. But Masaudi absolutely can. Like if he yes. runs the DMR, comes back in the 3K, there is, like, we, we just mentioned that Jacobs and Bosley have run 736, five seconds faster than what Masaudi's ran this year. But Masaudi's faster. Like if it comes down to a sprint and if I, I mean we don't think the uh title winning time is going to be below 740 and Miss Audi's proven that he can run 741 and finish well off of that so it's hard for me not to think that he if he comes into that fresh that he's not a, a, a favorite just with those two guys as well and you know you think about it like Jacobs and Bosley will probably have a 5k under the leg yep. already and he'll just have a mile Dude, Masaudi has is just looked. Um, and here's the thing: if Oklahoma State's in a DMR and they're just getting killed from the jump, yeah, he can. Like I, jog it I in. mean, he can he can jog it in. He doesn't have to do anything if he doesn't want to. Um, so, I mean, I don't know, man. I I am really close to saying that he's my national title favorite. He's right there. I mean, he he. Just think about where we're at with him. You just said. We, you almost are ready to call him a national title favorite. Think about how ludicrous <laughs> that would have sounded four months ago. I know, I know. four months ago. It's so like it's it's and and yet like that is a perfectly rational thought that he could win yep. the three k at nationals. 
against two guys who have run 736, no less. Like, he has been incredible. Like, I, I like I, I talked to you before we got started about how On Athletics Club has gone from, like, zero to world, maybe world best in a record-breaking time. You could say the same thing about Masaudi. Like, he was good, mm-hmm. but he has gone from good to national favorite in three months which he's is going from good to great to elite which and he is, skipped he skipped great yeah he skipped great it's it's insane what he's done and shoppy ran really well too to run 741 shoppy and almost awesome. win too like shoppy like, did all the work that's yeah. the thing like you watch that right shoppy did all the work yeah it, I, it, so i don't want to just gush about Masaudi because his teammates and I, I like i said i think meyer would have run 741 right right there too uh, if he had been in that race um, so, I mean, Oklahoma state is going to have a fun contingent at nationals. Um, and that three K you're going to see a lot of orange jerseys towards the front. It's going to be fun, man. It's going to be fun. All right. Uh, Gilman, seven forty three. Graham blank, seven forty four. I was almost really good on that call for those predictions, but I think those were very think, predictable. I, I, okay. Well, work with me. Here. It's been a <laughs> tough, been a very tough year for predictions for me, right? Like, I mean, just, you know, the women's 3K at the UW, I was like 848, 849, 856 was the winning time. You know, like I can't, I can't win. Um, but cool. I, anyways, um, let's move on. Well, Liam Murphy ran 745. He currently sits he's at not gonna 17. He's not even going to make it. Cole Sprout's got to be looking at this list. And we talked about this when we talked about the Lions. He is going to be very, very close. It is going to be right on the edge. If I had told you coming into this season that a Stanford guy is not going to qualify for nationals in the 3K, do you know how absurd that would have been as a suggestion? Yeah, like none Nico of them might. could still run. None of them might. None of them might get in. Hicks is just a matter of like, are you going to get into a fast enough race and actually get in? Sprout, are you going to try again? And Robinson, are you going to try to come back after World XC and try no. again? I don't know. Like That's they crazy. might have one more shot, but they have one more shot. And it's not an easy and, time, especially if two or three more guys continue to run faster. Nico Young could still get like a conversion somewhere, a last chance meet. Like there, there are chances for this to happen. I imagine Murphy's like right there, being like, "I'll give it another go." Yeah, he has to. <laughs> like has a, to. A, at this point, yeah. But really good race for him. In the five k, we also saw some unusually quick times. Uh, Amelia Mazdani fifteen eighteen. Lee Venters, 15.20. Aubrey Fentherway, 15.32. We saw Charles Hicks and Patrick Kiprock in Chicago run 13.22 and 13.24. We, we talked about with this, the over-unders lines, we just needed a few more quicker times and that the, the lines were going to get real interesting and that's exactly what happened. Um, I think we expected some of these people to run these times, but then you see like someone like Fentherway run 15.32, Kiprock run 13.24. And those are kind of the surprises that we talked about might just happen to go to make those lines go under. It's going to be tight. It's going to be tight. I think we got those lines right, though. I yeah. think with what we said with the overs and unders, I think those are right. Mazda Downey and Ventures, though. Like, I mean, I was like, those are the two favorites in this in this field. But I was like, they're going to run a little under 1540. 30, yeah. Uh, yeah, but then they dominated. They ran – Mazda Downey ran 1518. Ventures ran 15-20. I was like waiting for them to slow down. They never slowed down. They just kept going. Maza Downey doesn't have a classical like super high turnover kick, but she just started surging away, pulling, pulling, pushing, pushing, pushing over the last 300 meters or so. It was really impressive strength-based stuff, both from her and Ventures. Mm -hmm. And I think on the national stage, assuming that it's a fast enough race, and I think it will be. I agree. I think that benefits them both a lot. Like Mazda Downey has never looked that good. She was outstanding. And same thing with Ventures. I mean, Ventures, it makes me feel good that she's running that well again. 1520 yeah. is like a no joke time. So that's awesome. Yeah. Do you think the winning time at Nationals of the 5K is going to be under 1520 or do you think it's going to be? No, 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 no. It'll, it'll be, I, I think it'll be over 1530. Hmm. I think it'll be under 1530. 15, what, 1528. Okay. What do you want to do there? Yeah. What would you, what would you want to over under? Mm, I might go under. I, I think, I think we could end up mid 50 twenties. I just don't, I just don't think anyone's going to be like, why would I push the pace when the only shot I have is just having fresh legs against Tui? 
Yeah, like if this I, is a fit, if this is a fitness based race, why would you put your fitness against Tui's? Well, I don't think anybody's going to actually be thinking that. I think they're going to be thinking about who placing my fitness Give against everybody else in this field. Like, I don't think anybody's thinking about ways to be Tui at this point. I'm. I uh, I feel like Valby maybe is. May, well, yeah, she might be the only one, and maybe Olamami, but I think everybody else is like, how can I finish top three? Yeah, I, I and I don't know. Maybe Volby's like, yeah, I still want this race to be fast. I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Yeah. Um. Anyways, let's we'll save that for for March. We won't get into that now. But um, um anything on the men's side? I mean, Hicks running well. That looks that's good. The prop is um, better than expected, but this is roughly roughly what I expected. And then to wrap it up, we saw the UCLA women around ten fifty four with Mia Barnett anchoring them. Just. The, the women's DMR, it's so funny looking at that list and then looking at the men's DMR, which is just, like, horrendous in comparison. Like, the women's teams have just been like, yeah, we're just going to knock it out, get our DMR time early, not have to worry about it. And and the, the performance list is wild. Like, a fi- like, 1054 is third, and then you drop down six seconds, and that's 12th, 1059. Like, it's just... It's crazy well, how fast no, it's already because gone. Washington B. Oh, right, they, they right. Have that yes, extra right. For whatever, I don't know why they do that. Yeah, yeah. So it's technically 11, uh, Oregon State 11. is is really is yeah. 12 at 11 foot. That's right. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, just another great run from UCLA um, as a whole. Barnett looked great again. And they did this without McDonald, like, which is, I, I mean, really good sign as well. Impressive stuff, <laughs> super impressive stuff. Um, I mean, the, this, this remember this was the program altering transfer. Barnett yep. looks like the four thirty four this weekend puts your relay on the national stage. This has hints, very subtle hints, of Notre Dame when Carlson took over. Mm. Get a marquee miler, have some success in the DMR, build from there with a young yep. group. McDonald wasn't even on this relay. I don't know. Like Barnett might might be the woman who we look back on five, ten years from now and be like, she was the one that made UCLA nationally relevant. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's certainly in the cards. And yeah, it seems like um he's following the Carlson playbook, like you said, with the DMR and the and the elite miler. So that's a yeah, that's a good comparison. All right, I, I think that's where we're gonna end. Are you, we, you have anything else? I, I mean, I'm just trying to go through a few other things here just to see if we missed anything. A uh, shout out to Solomon ran 13 yeah. 26 in the 5K. I think he just deserves some love there. He was the top official collegiate uh, in the 5K there. 13:26. Dylan Powell 5K D2 record of his own at 13:28. Remember, he's in the portal, so. Mm-hmm. I think was it NAU he's looking at? I feel like what is it Colorado potentially coming back to Mines, which I'd be surprised about. Oklahoma State he's looking at Tennessee. I think there's a there's a handful of schools I think he's he's looking at. So we'll see what happens. Um, the men's D three five k record was broken not just twice, but like if you count two guys in the same race on a flat track, it was maybe broken three times um, in twenty in what like a couple hours, which is yeah so dumb. Women's 5K record broken, D3 uh, – well, women's D2 5K record broken, D3 mile men's record broken, so D3 DMR record broken. Like, D- it's just insane. <laughs> it's just insane. So the gap is, between divisions has never been smaller. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's still pretty substantial, but it's it's – the fact that we're talking about, like, 355 D3 milers aren't getting any attention now. No. Which is why – like, be- before the pandemic, a three fifty five miler like that guy could win the D one national title. Yeah, and now we're like, eh, I don't know if he'll make nationals. Like that's insane. It's <laughs> Anyways, a wild world. That's that's all I got. Um, YouTube. Uh, sorry about the video last time. I don't know. I'm gonna blame yeah. Ben's video on that side. It probably was my fault. But YouTube, uh, go subscribe there. Someone, by the way, asked us um, on the YouTube comments like. Why don't, why is this channel not called, uh, why is your, your podcast not called the Stratterport podcast? And why is it like the Blue Oval podcast? Isn't that branding 101? Well, branding also suggests that like we'll have multiple brands. So, no, I think it's, it's a fair question. We're going to have, we, the goal is to eventually have multiple shows, multiple podcasts. Yeah. So 
TSR. Got to differentiate umbrella. them. We're going to eventually, eventually, as we grow and expand, um, that's eventually what we're going to do. We're eventually going to have multiple podcasts: D two, D three, maybe like a rewatchables kind of uh, show that we would definitely. Yes, to do. I I would love to do that. Yeah. We've been talking about that for a while. It, about maybe that. maybe we need to do a YouTube comment of the of the week if if we get enough of those. Uh, yeah, I mean, hey, we've we been getting a little bit. So uh, go subscribe there. Five star rating and review. Go check out the site. We're doing D one rankings this week as well. The, the the written stuff there on the site is also extensive go check out the predictions that we do for every preview um yeah man we, we got a lot going on so buckle up for a very exciting postseason ben is there anything else that you have here go birds go birds go birds so that's and, all i got man all right well until next week garrett i'll talk to you i'll talk to you